Now here's a photo of um, Canic Chart. I didn't take this myself, I must admit I've, I've pinched this off the internet so I'm just going to have a quick look at that. And then before I get started I'll just quickly show you about all the usual stuff on the uh, uh, on the palette you've got seven colours, ultramarine, lemon yellow, pines grey, lizard and crimson, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red. I got um that's the little brush I use. I've been doing some seven by fives. If if you look on me in my eBay store you'll see some little pictures I've been doing. Um this is the large Ron Ransom Ake does most of the uh, damage. Three quarter inch flat and a number three rigger. We've got a water jar with a nice lip on it, takes the excess water off the uh, goat air on the ache brush. The, the paints are Cutman watercolours, just squeezed out, left to dry overnight. And I can whiz round the palette then with a the brush, and I don't pick up great big dollops of paints. The paper's 15 by 11 Fabriano, and it's clipped onto this uh, piece of plywood with these bulldog clips. I've got my uh, tea towel up there drying. So another quick look at it, I mean you can see you've got all this really nice dark area, some cracking colours here, sort of raw sienna light red -y sort of colours, and then some nice silhouetted trees against the main light part there in the top corner. So let's start as always by giving the paper a bit of a soaking, clear water, this is a big brush. And then I'm going to go into Raw sienna, no real order to it, just bang it in and then slightly clean and then ultramarine, just whack some of that in like that, clean the brush, even put a few, a few little clouds and stuff. Uh, Too much. Don't want to mess about that too much. So I've just wet this slightly too much. You can see all the uh, the paint's just coming down a bit more than what I want it to. Um, with one way around that, you can always get your tissue and just dab a little bit here and there. Take some clouds out. Just squeeze it up into a ball so you get sort of random, randomy sort of shape, and then just. Click a few clouds in. Just add a reservoir building up at the bottom. I'll do for that. Most of most of the action is going to be happening around this sort of area, so I'm going to worry too much about the sky. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the brush, give them the same colours, going to put in the distant. Some distant trees, now they're about two thirds of the way up. So, using the same colours as the sky helps with recession. And then just using the, just the corner of the brush. Maybe they might be too strong. Remember, you can always soften them off by just, if you think they're too strong, just dab them with a bit of tissue. Just see how, they, see how it just blends in into the background even more. You just sort of soften the tops off. It's about there. A bit, of, a bit of land, something like that. And again, if you think it's too strong, you want to soften it off. Just get the tissue on it. Just give it a bit of a dab. Now on there, I'm going to introduce a bit of lemon yellow. I still haven't cleaned the brush. And then just again using the corner into the lemon yellow. Just using the corner of the brush. Flicking it up, and you can see where I've lightened it with the white clouds. It now helps with the, see the profile of the trees quite nicely. So that's the start of those. Actually, I'll just uh, these trees are sort of coming. They're going to go somewhere like that across over to there. And they're going to get nice and dark. Mm -hmm. sort of really 
really dark now. The pine's grey, ultramarine, pine's grey, lemon yellow. Really sort of dark. Dark green. In fact, what I might do is let, let it dry in a bit and I, I, well, it depends how dark I get it. If it's not dark enough, I'll let it dry and then paint paint over it to get it nice and really dark. Yeah, a bit of light red in there just to change it, change the colour slightly. And then while that's just before I go in with my fingernail, I'm just going to pull it tight. The paper's stretched, I want it nice and flat. Otherwise, you're poking with your finger and it's just it's coming away from the board all the time. So, with that in, let's just flick in a few, um, a few little trunks. And then, as they get as they get the closer ones, you switch to your big index finger and then really. And in some big ones. Yeah, there's quite a few of these. Remember, if you put too many in, or if you don't like it, just just paint straight over them. Let's have a big one in there. Look. That'll do. That'll do for that, I think. Um, what I might do is uh, switch to the rigger, maybe. Same colours in the rigger, same colours again, and then you can just, just sort of try and continue some of these. Let's just continue in those branches this is a bit I mean this is just where like the lights catching catching them I'm not going to bother about too much now on there we've got this nice sort of light red raw sienna -y sort of colour that sort of goes around like that I'm doing sort of raw, raw sienna, burnt umber, light red, just mixing those. And a bit of ultramarine just to darken it again. And we don't automatically go to the Payne's grey just for when you want to dark it. I find ultramarine works pretty well. It's a bit of variety, so just keep adding it. Just try different things. Don't just do what you automatically think. Everyone else is doing. And just flip, flip that up a bit. Something like that. And it's just coming down. I'm watching you go like a path going around there like that. Something more red. Bring that out a bit. With ultramarine, darken it again. Same on the other side. You can see the, the sort of lighter tone and the darker one now. You get a nice contrast. Nice contrast. See how that, that the dark the background trees look really far away now with this strong stronger tone in front of them. And dark, burnt umber, ultramarine. And let's, uh, let's just put in some of these. 
Look at these trees there. A few of these going off. Just filling this space up here on the left. Now if I switch to the rig, I've got a couple of smaller ones. Plenty of water. I've just got a few uh, ones that don't quite go off to the top of the page. that brush clean the brush scuff it up so it's sort of dry and all the airs are all over the place the yeah, airs are something like that it looks a complete mess don't worry about it you, you ain't gonna break the brush you ain't gonna damage it and then just go into your your greeny colours predominantly lemon yellow and then a bit of ultramarine Payne's grey maybe raw sienna and you just sort of dry brushing a bit of a few leaves leaves on there that's enough of that um, let's put this path in now it's sort of green it's just a green grassy path I'll just get a raw sienna and just really just, just swish it in. I think next I'll give that a mm. too many little white bits. Just uh, let's just darken that up a bit. size that path a bit with a few little few little rocks on the way. I always go over the top with these. And you can always paint if you don't like them just paint over I'm just using the this is a Bob Ross oil painting knife. It just comes in handy for uh, scraping in rocks. Just get it in so it's about half dry, and then you just go. A whoosh, that's all. That's all it is. Very easy to get too mad with it. Um, what I'm going to do next is dry that and then put some shadows in.
I'm doing, I'm sort of just looking along it like that with the light shining on and I can see that it's dry. So that way I can make sure I'm confident I can do like that, it's not going to go anywhere. I can see from here it's dry. So, and it's got to be dry because otherwise when you put these shadows on you're going to make a right mess if it's still wet. And the easy shadows uh, so a bit of light red, ultramarine. Right now, where are we going to go then? So we're sort of coming at, across there like that. Does that look better or does that look a complete mess? Done. Um, I can't make my mind up to be honest with that looks uh well, I'll I'll give that a quick try. Julie's out on that one. I can't. Um, I'm not convinced that that's improved it. But onwards and upwards. Let's take the rigger and let's have a little, a little figure. Let's just have a couple of figures just wandering off. Let's just have a moulding hands. Put a little shadows off there as well. And then down there. And the pop me signature. Right, let's have a close look at this. So there's the finished painting. Shadows don't look too bad. <sighs> I went into a bit of head first, I didn't really think properly before I did them. You see I was trying to make it nice and sort of dark around this sort of area. Um, um, what I did, I did mean to paint over these a little bit. I've left them a bit bare, but not to worry. Um, so you can see what I did with them, put the sky in and then put the clouds in. And obviously with the white of the clouds it helps bring out the profile of the trees along there. Um, same with the uh, the nice sort of trunks here, almost sort of silhouetted against the light coming from behind. Um, you can see the shadows help emphasise the lighter areas as well around here. A um, couple of little figures just to bring a bit of life to the thing. Got a nice um, little path that sort of sweeps sweeps around. And then scraping the rocks with the shadows in, you get this sort of nice light and shadowy sort of effect as it comes across and off into the distance. Well thanks for watching, I hope you like that. Keep practicing, any questions please ask and I'll see you again soon.